if you are a nature and especially wildlife photographer, I guess you know the never-ending search for the perfect camera bag. And to be honest, I kind of gave up. I think the perfect camera bag just doesn't exist, but I'm still looking for one that suits me even better than what I have so far. And there is usually several kind of criteria that my camera bag should meet. Obviously, it should be as comfortable as possible. And while there are several that I think fit this criteria, there is two things that seem to be kind of contradictory. The one thing is that I shoot a lot of wildlife, so I usually go out with my RF 600mm f4. And ideally I want a backpack that not only fits the RF 600mm f4 and some extra lenses, but one where I can mount the RF 600mm f4 directly on the camera because this just makes it much easier in case there is a snow or a rain outside. I don't want to take out the lens and the camera body and then put them together and dismount them basically when I store them back in the backpack. Um, and sometimes it also needs to be quick there. I'm hiking somewhere and suddenly I see an animal. I want to take out the camera and start shooting right away. The other thing is that sometimes I try to reduce it, but sometimes I also take the plane to go on a trip for photography. Uh, luckily this year I managed without planes, but last year I went to Costa Rica and there I obviously also want to bring my big super telephoto lens, but I also want to fit it in the overhead compartment or I need to fit it in the overhead compartment of the plane. I think you can see the problem. I want a backpack that is as small as possible, but still fits all my stuff. That obviously doesn't exist, but I was very curious about the Nia Evo, or however the brand is pronounced. Um, it's a Scandinavian brand and this is the Fjord 60C. So it is a 60 liter backpack. And the cool thing about this is uh, you can fit a 600 millimeter F4 with the camera attached in it. And I've been using this backpack now for several months in different countries and different circumstances with different equipment. And in this video, I want to present this backpack a bit, um, kind of the features, the different compartments that you have, also some additional things that you can buy. And then also talk a bit about my experiences with the backpack, what I liked and what I didn't like so much. <music> So the Fjord 60C comes in a few different colors. I went for the simple black. Um, you can see around the zippers we have these kind of handles that are in a bluish tone that I really like. Um, let's start with the outside. So we have this recycled material that I mentioned. It's kind of a nylon, so it's, a, it's water resistant. And you can also see that all the zippers are kind of sealed, at least the ones on the outside, not the one on the back, but the others are all sealed. So they should be quite resistant to weather or to rain. So far I have never used a rain cover with this backpack. It seems to be doing quite well even with some rain. So let's have a look at the different compartments. Here in the front there is kind of the laptop compartment. Um, it fits quite easily my 16 inch MacBook Pro even with a, with a sleeve, but you could also put it directly in here. Um, this one is here is a bit protected so you actually would not need the sleeve. Um, then here in front you have a smaller um, pouch which st still should fit quite easily an iPad or something. I usually use this just for external hard drives or something thin and uh, now there is a microfiber cloth in it but not more. Um, so I really like this here. Then uh, on top we have this extra big compartment and only if you fill this one up you actually reach the, reach the 60 liters that are advertised. So this compartment here is just a very thin layer of uh, nylon. I mean, very thin, it's, it's enough, but there is no extra protection. So I would not really put lenses or anything that is a bit more fragile in here. Uh, it's more for clothes, some uh, food, whatever. Uh, the good thing is that it's quite expandable. And on the other hand, if you don't need it, you can just um, roll it down, make the air go out, um, roll it down, and then you can kind of lock it down here and then the backpack becomes much smaller which was useful for me a couple of times when I took it in the train and the train was getting a bit full um, or obviously if you want to take the plane that you can make it uh, 
well, fit in the overhead compartment. Mm. The one thing I wish that this had was would be just a small internal net or two that you can uh, separate the stuff a bit. Really a thin one would be enough. Uh, but I feel um, I would like to sometimes put my hard drives in there, spare batteries, uh, maybe my chargers on cables, because I prefer not to put them in front of the laptop. The, the bigger things and like that, they just fly a bit around. So that's one small criticism. On the side, we have here these pockets. And I actually like that it's not just nets because I feel these are more sturdy. Also, if you put something a bit heavier, it will last longer. Um, so it fits very easily, as you can see, a half liter bottle. Uh, it also fits two half liters bottle, bottle and one and a half liter. And a half liter is a bit tight because then it starts to push a bit against the RCI. So. Uh, especially if you have a lot of camera equipment, I would not overload this here too much. But it has some kind of elastic and you can also tighten it more or loosen it more. And the nice thing here is that it holds the bottle quite well. So if I turn it upside down, um, so far it never happened to me that I lost the bottle with this backpack. Um, so that's definitely quite nice. If you want to put a tripod here, uh, as I mentioned, I feel it's quite sturdy. So I don't hesitate doing this with other backpacks that just have a net. I usually attach the tripod on the side, not putting the feet in the net. Here I'm, I feel quite comfortable. And um, you have here on both sides these uh, straps to basically lock it down. And then I think we can go to the main attraction, the back compartment. So the system of this backpack works quite similar as for example, f-stop, you have these internal camera units. Here they're called removable camera units, so RCI. But the system is basically that once you open here, um, you have this camera unit and you can exchange it. This one is the extra large version because it fits my RF 600mm f4 with the camera attached. This sounds great. I need to say it's a very tight fit. It's not very pretty it's really big it's really like pushing the upper part um I, with a sony 600 millimeter f4 or nikon 600 millimeter f4 you will have a better time because they are substantially shorter but the canon still fits which is definitely nice um of course you can configure it as you want the whole thing here is black which looks quite cool and it's not so susceptible to some dust on the other hand um it can be that especially in the parts a bit more here behind, if it's if you're in a darker environment, it's a bit tricky to actually see what you have in there. Um, I try not to have too many loose material here anyway, but just to be aware. Um, if I before I close it up, here you have two additional pockets, um, really slim ones, but they are, can be great for another microfiber. Uh, cloth or whatever. What I would prefer here actually is if they would be translucent or transparent so that you actually see what you have in there. This is currently not the case. I will come to this bag in a minute. I will just take it out before I close the backpack. A few more things. You have here this waist uh, strap or this thing to close around your waist for better support. Um, you could actually remove it if you want to, maybe if you go on a flight or whatever. Uh, I never did it so far. Um, and here on top, um, these shoulder pads, they feel quite nice because they're quite wide and soft. And also you have here on your um, chest another strap to close it down. You can easily move this to another position. And in my opinion, it moves a bit too easily. I actually lost it two times. I mean, I immediately realized and put it in my pocket and installed it again back home. But in my opinion, it, it almost goes out a bit too easily. Another thing you can configure here, and I don't think many other backpacks can, is the height of the where the straps are overall. So now they're in this position, but I could put them in another one. And that's obviously great because not all of us have the same body height. Overall, I find it quite comfortable to also walk over longer periods with this backpack. Just if I put the 600mm f4 in it um, and have it on my back, I can feel kind of the lens hood or the, the, the where the lens hood ends. I can really feel this in my back and this is not so nice. If I have a completely straight back, it's okay. But especially if, you, if I walk up a mountain uphill, 
I tend to be a bit have a crooked back and then I really feel it. I also have this with other backpacks, for example my F-Stop Tilopa, which is a 50 liter and also fits in the overhead compartment. I have the same, but a bit less pronounced actually than with this one. Um, only with bigger back backpacks I don't have this issue at all. Um, the same is if you really put only a little bit of equipment in there and it starts to kind of fall around. You also need to be careful that you kind of fix it somehow, that it stays in its place. So really use the compartmentalizers or whatever, or put some clothes that they can stay. Um, because otherwise you just feel it a bit more easily. I think just this part here could be a bit harder. There is a fix for these things. I just mentioned the clothes and even if I have my 600 millimeter F4, if I take a hoodie or something and I put it in the backpack to even out basically the, well, the weird shapes of the 600 millimeter F4, then it works quite okay and I can also hike with it. But I think this is something personal. It depends maybe on your back. It obviously depends what kind of equipment you put in. If I just put my in my RF 100 to 300 with the uh, Canon R5, I find this a super nice combination because it easily fits in this backpack even with the lens hood attached. So I really like to use it. It's just with the 600 millimeter. It's kind of not a perfect solution. It's more a solution that works, at least for my experience. I just mentioned this small bag here. It's a pouch, a 1.5 liter pouch. You can either attach it on the backpack or I usually attach it to my belt. To have the most important stuff in there because usually if I'm taking pictures especially in the mountains I just put my backpack somewhere and then I walk somewhere else and sometimes I leave it a few hundred meters behind and then suddenly I ran out of battery or I need my tele extender or I get hungry whatever here I can put in the most important things I mean in winter it's fine or I can put it in my jacket but in, especially in summer if I don't have so many pockets um, this one is uh, taking up to 1.5 liter of space. It's still quite compact. It's the same nylon material that we have on the backpack and it has basically a big inner compartment and two smaller ones that are separated by zippers. So great for batteries. I have a microfiber cloth like this blowing thing, extenders, maybe a small bar, bar like a protein bar or whatever if you get hungry. And when I do landscape photography I also put my filters in here. And while you can hear when you open the zipper I think you can do it fairly quiet for not disturbing any more uh, sensitive wildlife. So I hope you enjoyed the video, the review about this backpack. If you're interested, I put the link of uh, Naya Evo down in the video description. Um, let me know what you think of the backpack. Maybe if you would like to see more Naya Evo products here on this channel in the future. Of course, a big thanks for Naya Evo for sending me this backpack and see you in the next video.